What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook late Friday afternoon. Thought I'd jump on before I head into the weekend and talk some Packers with you fine folks in lieu of any real breaking news going on with the Green Bay Packers. But as always, I want to get your thoughts, your feelings, what's going on inside that head of yours, you Green Bay Packers fan, you. Wayne, hi, how are you? Thanks for joining. Look at this, people filling up the place. I love it. Joan, hello, thank you for joining. Uh, Jerry, hello. Um, so, you know, we, the big trade happened in the NFL today. Marcus Peters, who many of you have asked about uh, throughout the course of the last week or so, uh, is being traded to the Los Angeles Rams. So take that name off your list as far as potential targets. Uh, Pete Doherty did have him listed on his latest uh, up this morning at PackersNews.com, a list of five potential targets the Packers could look at to fill the void at corner. You can take Peters off your list. He'll be going to the L.A. Rams. Uh, Compensation is not yet known, but you have to think, uh, you know, given the fact that reports were that the Chiefs were asking for Robert Quinn at first, uh, the defensive end, but it turns out they'll only be getting draft picks. It sounds like there's quite a few picks headed Kansas City's way for Marcus Peters. Hello from Chicago. What's up, Raj? How are you, man? Is B.J. Raji still available? Sean, I should hope so. Um, but you never know. Dale, hello. Thanks for joining. He had issues. Dan, that is correct. Um, the extent of which we'll probably never really know, but you have to think they were significant given the fact that Kansas City was willing to move one of their best young players, if not their best young player, um, while well, they still had two years on his deal, well, a year and a fifth-year option. Um, it's very rare in the NFL that you see a guy that talented with that many years left of controllability, so to speak, contract-wise, uh, moved out of the team that drafted him. Uh, it suggests that things are not sunny and rosy behind the scenes there in Kansas City, and between Kansas City and Peter. Someone's suggesting Malcolm Butler. We've talked about that extensively. Um, I tend to think he'll be highly sought after in free agency, and I doubt the Packers will be all in uh, spending on him. Tulsa, Oklahoma. What's up, Keith? How are you, man? Should try to get another tight end, though, uh, free agency or the draft. I think they have to go both routes. Tr uh, it was reported today Trey Burton will be hitting free agency. Uh, the Eagles will not be re-signing him and or putting the franchise tag on him, so he will be a possibility. Uh, there have been a couple other guys who have already been released as cap casualties. Um, be sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest on that. We'll undoubtedly have um, uh, pieces about you know every position and what the Packers should be looking for. Should the Packers shine, sign Josh Sitton? Jose, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, when they cut Sitton, it was mostly because of um, behind-the-scenes, locker room dynamics, things of that nature. Mike McCarthy's still in town. I don't see Sitton coming back in through that door as long as McCarthy's still the coach. Looking clean. Thanks. Um, Butler will be wildly overpriced. Lee, I tend to agree. Trade for Martavis. Alex, I've been getting that question a lot today since uh, the word leaked out that the Steelers are open to uh, trading Martavis Bryant. I can't imagine the Packers sending anything significant to the Steelers for a player who is basically one strike away from a year-long suspension. Obviously, he's talented, but uh, anyone who makes that trade will most likely be sending a somewhat significant pick. Now, maybe it's you know early day three, maybe it's late day two. But I can't imagine the Packers using draft capital to go get a guy who could, you know, is basically one mistake away from being gone for the year. Um, now, maybe if it's a really, really low pick, a sixth or a seventh rounder, maybe. But I tend to think with once this kind of thing gets out there, you got to wonder if the Steelers may just be, uh, just be kind of a precursor to cutting him. They've obviously found their their guy in Juju Smith, Schuster. Um, Martavis Bryant is probably not long for Pittsburgh as it is. Bowman and Colvin in free agency. I think those are both possibilities. Colvin especially, I think, is a guy they, they, they definitely will be or should be targeting. Hello, Mohamed. Thanks for joining us. Uh, week one starting tight end, guy in-house or someone we don't know. Ray, I tend to think it's probably, probably someone on the outside, probably someone not on the roster at the moment. But you never know. Maybe they stick with Kendricks as their starter. I tend to think he's much more suited to being a uh, number two tight end, but we'll see how... Brian Gutekunst feels about that. Where does Geronimo fit in the wide receiver core? That'll be interesting to see how the offseason plays out. I think he really didn't take much of a step last year. I know fans seem to really like him, and I, I understand the affinity. He really came on his rookie year. 
Um, I didn't really see much progression from him his second season. Now, that doesn't mean he can't still get better, but uh, I think the Packers probably would have liked to have seen a little bit more from him, and I think they'll definitely be looking to upgrade at that position, uh, either through the draft or through free agency, though I suspect it'll be through the draft. Any word on Nelson contract restructure? Juan, not yet, but as I said yesterday, I think we'll start to get an idea of what's going on there uh, next week during the Combine. Um, I'll be in Indianapolis starting on Tuesday through the weekend. Um, that's when the entire NFL world is in one little place in Indianapolis there. We have all the personnel people, all the media, all the coaches, all the agents. will so all be in one spot. So you can bet if and when those talks you know, get surfaced or uh, start to commence, uh, word will leak out somehow. Josh Jackson, I think he's a real possibility, Andrew. Uh, we'll see how the board falls there in the first round, but uh, I think you, know, you could do a lot worse at 14. Uh, he's a real player, I think. If Packers don't get someone to stretch the field, it'll be 2015 all over again? Not necessarily. Look at the uh, eight-game stretch when they, quote, ran the table in 2016. I mean, Rodgers played some of the best football he's ever played. They were out of their minds, and they didn't have anyone who could stretch the field uh, that second half of the season. Uh, they went to a much more short ball control game, and uh, you know they were dominant in offense for a lot of that stretch. I mean, take no, you know, don't look any further than the Patriots. Uh, obviously, they went out and got somebody who could do it this year, but the year prior they won the Super Bowl without a legitimate deep threat. Uh, the idea that you have to have a deep threat, I think, is a little bit overplayed. Now, could you use one? Would it be nice? Absolutely, of course it would. But this idea that uh, they'd be dead in the water without one, I think, is a little silly. If Baker Mayfield is available at 14, do you take him? Oh, man, do I? I'd seriously think about it, but I'm not in charge. Um, I would be very surprised if Brian Gutekunst made that his first selection. But you never know. You never know. Aaron Rodgers is getting older. He has missed significant time now twice in the last couple of years. So, not the last couple of years, but, the last, you know, 2013, 2018. Um, yeah, I, I would be very surprised if that were the case, but... You can't say never. It would never happen because you just don't know. Uh, even a guy like Torrey Smith would help a ton. I guess and no. I think obviously he he has some wheels and he's been able to to help uh, wherever he's gone. Uh, some more than others, depending on the quarterback. But um, yeah, I think they can whatever they need, they can probably find in the draft. Um, you know, I do think there are one or two guys out there in free agency who may be able to help in that regard. John Brown being probably the, the big name that everyone will kind of talk about. But, um, yeah, I think it's a little overplayed. That's, that's all, how I think about it. I want Ziggy Ansa. If the Lions don't tag him, I will be absolutely shocked if Ziggy Ansa becomes available. I tend to think he'll get tagged and or they will resign him. You really like Mayfield. Alex, you're right. QB1, baby. QB1. Marcus Peters will be helpful defensively. He most certainly will be. Uh, the, the Rams are paying a premium, but uh, they're getting they're going to get a lot of bang for their buck. Uh, thoughts on why we weren't at least in on Peters? Uh, Andy, I would tend to think, uh, you know, they will most likely look to spend free agency dollars rather than trading for a guy who is two years away from needing a new contract and obviously is going to get a premium dollar but yet is very volatile off the field and even on the field at times to the point where he's cost his team on multiple occasions. I don't think you want to trade for somebody else's headache. Uh, at least the Packers don't. Um, clearly some other teams were interested. The 49ers did their work. The Browns did their work. Um, but ultimately it was the Rams who pulled the trigger. P Peters is a stud. Another miss by Green Bay. So can, can we let the ink dry on the contract first before we call it a miss? You guys have to label everything so quickly. We have no idea what it is yet. Let it play out. Let it play out. Can I say I told you so when Mayfield doesn't quote pan out? Um, only if uh, he ends up in a position to succeed and then doesn't. A lot of it is about fit and where these guys end up more often than not. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers is a perfect example. Uh, when he came into the league, he did not look very good, but then he was given the opportunity to sit for three years, and then lo and behold, he became one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Does that happen if he goes to, say, San Francisco and is forced to play right away? Only history, uh, alternate history can tell us. But, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the draft, especially at the quarterback spot, has to do with where guys land and the situation they're put into. 
Any chance we draft a safety? Derek, I think so. Um, you know, I, I tend to think they'll let Morgan Burnett test the market. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean he's gone, but I tend to think they they will allow him to. And if he does find somebody out there willing to pay him $10-plus plus million dollars a year, I think he'll be gone. And in that case, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they address safety yet again uh, after taking Josh Jones in the second round last year. Um, as far as numbers being retired, don't you believe it's time Green Bay hung up number 80 for Lofton slash Driver? No, but aren't you, aren't you just kind of disproving the whole point there? Which one are you hanging it up for, Lofton or Driver? I think you've just killed your argument. They're, they were both great. Driver is obviously the statistical leader as far as the most productive uh, wide receiver in Green Bay ever. But Lofton was a much better wide receiver than Donald Driver was. And that's not even a controversial statement. That's just fact. So... You know, I don't think you can you can retire it for either guy. Whose name are you putting up there in the ring? Um, obviously, the answer, the answer, the kind of knee jerk answer would probably be Driver, but Lofton was a much better wide receiver, and he was you know incredibly productive. So, uh, I, if it's going to be anybody, it's going to be Justin Perillo. He's the one who's going to get the number eight. You retired. Uh, does Mike Patton coach from the press box or a sideline? Curtis, there's no definitive answer on that yet. Uh, I hope to ask him that next week at the Combine, but um, they may not have determined that yet. Um, not retiring 80, driver so overrated. Oh, Ray, I think it's hard to call him overrated, but um, I don't think he's a pro football Hall of Famer like James Lofton is. Um, I'd say 84 before both of them. Uh, well, you know, uh, Sterling Sharp's short tenure in Green Bay makes it hard to make the case for retiring the number. I'm on Green too, I guess. He's an all-time leader in rushing for the pack. Now you guys are getting it. Will jersey numbers ever get into three digits, 100, 101, 102, etc.? One, I tend to doubt it, but you never know. Driver was tough as nails. Yes, he was. Uh... <laughs> yes, John, I agree. Next up, another must into the Hall of Fame after Jerry Kramer is number 36, Leroy Butler. Could not agree more. Uh, his not being in the Hall of Fame is a gross oversight. Uh, I'll take one or two more here yet. Dennis, Dennis can see into the future. Uh, he not only knows that the Peters, uh, the not trading for Peters was a miss, he knows that taking King over Watt was a mistake by the Green Bay Brass, even though it's only one year into their respective tenures. And he hasn't included Vince Beagle, who uh, also has to be contrib you know, considered in that formula. But he's... Seen into the future, and he knows it's a miss by Green Bay. I love those. Uh, thoughts on a new Han Solo movie? Alex, I'm giddy. I can't wait. I know there's a lot of haters out there. I don't care. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, Driver was one of my favorites. Loved watching him and Gilbert Brown for good reason. They were both very good players. Miami will draft Mayfield. Alex, I agree. That's probably where, it, where I'll end up. Uh, I need to retire number 90 for Raji. Now you guys are talking. And now I've got an XFL question. It's all deteriorating. Uh, I'm going to take off. Thanks so much for your questions. I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you guys on Monday.